Hi folks, Mr. Ackerman here with a video to show you how to do some editing in Photoshop in a way that I think you're going to find enjoyable and you can also go back and change your edit if you uh, have a new idea about what you want to do with a photo at any time. So I've got a photo here that I took of my son at the park and um, I like the way it looks but it could be better. It's not very contrasty, the colors are not very punchy. I want to crop it in a little bit so it just kind of focuses in on him. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to open Photoshop. So the way you open Photoshop on a Macintosh, which I'm using right now, a MacBook, same ideas on your PCs. You're going to search for it, you're going to type it in, and boom, it's going to open. Uh, I already had it open, which is why that came up so quickly, by the way. Now, I'm using Photoshop CC. You guys in school have Photoshop CS6. They're very similar. A few things are different. Here's what to do. Go File. Now, I'm going to use Open. But I want you to use Open As, which I think is just a little bit further down in your menu here. So go Open. Now the next thing is, you're going to find the photo that you want. For me, I had it in Downloads, and it was this one right here. What I do is I go Options, and then this pops up. But if you used Open As, this stuff will already be there. And what you want to do is under Format, change it from the JPEG, which came out of your phone, to Camera Raw up here. And what that's going to do is open this in something called Adobe Camera Raw, which is a really fun and easy way to edit. Here's what's going to pop up. This is also very similar on my computer as it will be on yours. Now, first thing, before you do anything, go up here and select the Crop tool. And drag these corners around however you want to show the part of the photo that you care most about and that you want to show and crop out everything else. So let's just say for whatever reason this is all I want to show. Okay? Maybe I'll expand that a little bit to there and like that. You can also, you see this line here, it's not aligned with the edge of the crop box. So go to the edge here, you see this curved line. Just turn this a little bit to straighten that out. And then when you're happy, hit enter and there you go. I like this a lot better. It really concentrates on the subject, my son. Now, next step is, first of all, hit this default button to get everything back to zero, okay? And under white balance, hit that to as shot. So everything here should read zero, okay? We're all zeroed out and this is our photo. The first thing you need to do is set the color. If you remember, we learned in class about warm light and cool light. Warm light is like sunrise and sunset. Cool light is like maybe on a cloudy day. So if the photo is too warm, you can cool it down by dragging the temperature this way. But the picture can start to look unnatural if you go too far. And if it's too cool and you warm it up, you can also go too far. So here's what I do. Again, this is going to be set to as shot. I'm going to go up here and select what's called the white balance tool. And you want to click on areas that you know are either black or gray or white. So objects that you know for sure are black, like tires. If I click here, it makes a little bit of a difference. You see the numbers changed a bit. Uh, my son's pants were gray. Numbers change a little bit more. Click on something green, and uh, things are starting... Whoa, that's terrible. Click on something blue. Yikes, that's not gray or black or white. Click on something yellow. Terrible, terrible. Click on something neutral, black, and boom, you get a much nicer result. Once you're happy with that, either by using this or by using the sliders, now you're ready to play with the sliders here. Exposure means brightness. Make the photo brighter, but not too bright. Make it darker, but not too dark. What do I like? Use your best judgment, but maybe about there. Add a little bit of contrast. I like to add about 20 points usually, and if that's too much, I can dial it back later. Highlights means the bright areas. Here's a really bright area. If you want to make it even brighter without brightening the other areas, then just move the highlight slider to the right and you can see the sky got a little bit brighter. But if you think the sky is a bit too bright and you want to tone it down a bit, go down this way. Similarly, shadows are dark areas, like down here is a shadow area, it's dark. If I want to brighten it without brightening other areas, like my son's face or his shirt, then I just take the shadows up a little bit and you can see that got a little bit brighter without affecting the rest of the photo too much. Sometimes the black parts, which you really want to be rich and striking and awesome to look at, get washed out when you do this. So drop down the black slider a bit and look at how those tires look super awesome again. 
and same with the whites. You sometimes want to make them a little punchier this way. Finally, texture, clarity, and dehaze. We're going to leave these for now, the, the, except the clarity one. I kind of like that. When you go to the right with clarity, you add contrast, but if you go too far, it gets really sharp and fake looking. So I usually give a tiny bit of clarity, and that's about it. Finally, vibrance and saturation are very similar. Saturation makes your colors punchier. Go too far, and they look fake. Same thing with vibrance. Okay, so what I usually find is vibrance is a little more subtle than saturation. So I bring it up a little bit until I'm happy with the colors, but not too far. Now at this point, see this button down here? This is, uh, or sorry, uh, yes, this is the one. What you can do here is hit this to go back and forth between what you started with and what you have. See this resets everything to where I started because I hit the default button. And now I've made changes. I think the color's better, the brightness is better, the contrast is better. I did the crop, I really like this photo. I could leave it here if I wanted, but I'll show you a few other things you can do. This tab here, skip it. Skip this for now. This tab here has sharpening and noise reduction. It's good to add a little bit of sharpening here, so maybe like 30, 40, 50 points. Don't go too far or you're going to kill the photo. It's going to start looking very pixelated and, and fake. Look at his face there. It doesn't look very good. Keep this around here. Uh, noise reduction, by the way, is something we use only rarely in really exceptional circumstances, so just leave that for now. Uh, this button here, leave for now, please. But if you want to know, HSL is Hue, Saturation, Luminance. I'll leave it to you to experiment with this and see what it does. This next one, Split Toning, again, very specialized adjustment. Leave it for now. This one here, Lens Corrections. I always click Enable Profile Corrections. If it's unclicked, see how the photo changes just a little bit? But when I click it, what it does is it detects the camera that I used. It's an iPhone 6S and it changes the photo slightly to actually correct for flaws in that are actually just built into the camera because of the way they manufactured it. FX, grain is something we sometimes add to a black and white photo and I didn't even talk about that yet, so don't worry about this. But post crop vignetting, see this? If I go to the right, the edges get bright like an old fashioned photo. And if I go to the left, the edges get dark, which concentrates the viewer's attention in the middle. But don't go too far, because it can start to look really overdone and fake. I sometimes, but not always, add maybe 10 or 15 points of negative uh, post-crop vignetting. These last three ones over here, ignore them. We're never going to use them. Go back to the beginning. There is another one you can play with. Again, we're going to do this in the future. But for me, it's located here in my version of Photoshop. It's the color. We change it to monochrome, you get yourself a black and white photo, which is cool. But again, that's for the future when we actually do a lesson on black and white. So leave this in color. Okay, last thing. You might be tempted to click open image, but don't do that yet. Hold the shift key and watch what happens to this. Shift, off, shift, off. It goes to open object. What that means is when I hold this down and click, it's gonna open in the main part of Photoshop and it's gonna have this little square with a little thing in the corner. That means if I ever double click, I can go back into Adobe Camera Raw and all of my changes are saved. And once I've done this once, I don't have to shift click anymore, I just click OK and it goes back in here. Now when you're done, you're gonna go File and you're gonna go Save As and you're gonna select PSD. It's gonna come up PSD, but if it isn't, then just get it from here, Photoshop, Photoshop Document, PSD. And when you save this, it'll ask you if you want to do this, click OK. It'll take a minute to save because it's a really big file. But basically what this will do is, if you look back here, I've got the original JPEG and I've got the PSD. Okay? Watch what the PSD does. If I close this here and then I go File, Open, or sorry, in case you're wondering how I did that, File, Open, and I go to the PSD, it brings me back to this funny little square here, which double click allows me to go in here. If you don't save it as a PSD, you can't do that. Okay, now let's look back one more time at the PSD. Look at the file size, it's gigantic, 90 megabytes. Whoa, way too big to upload to your website, which you're gonna have very shortly. Way too big to share with people. The original was only 
4.6 megs. So the PSD is good for saving the changes we made, but it's not good for sharing. Let's go back into Photoshop. File, please save this as a JPEG by doing this. And then when you click Save, it'll say, all right, what quality level? Eight is usually a good number. It's not too big, it's not too small. It has enough information. And if you click OK, let's see what that does. Go in here. Now I have the original and I have the PSD at 90 megs, but I also have this new JPEG at only 2.2 megs. This is a great file for uploading to your website or sharing. So we're always gonna save a second copy after the PSD that's a little bit smaller than the original so that we can quickly upload. And once you're done, you can just close that down. Uh, if it hasn't already saved, then uh, you can click it one more time, let it go and do its thing, and you're done. So that's basically it. Uh, you've seen how I've changed from the original to a much better cropped, uh, improved version. I like this a lot. If I ever want to change it, I just go back to the PSD, go in and make a new change. I could make different versions of this and see which one I like afterwards. All right, thanks for watching, and I'm really looking forward to seeing your great photos in class. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.